Good morning, church. Good morning, church. A little bit louder. I, I've got a mic up here that's got to pick you up. I said, good morning, church. Good morning. There it is. Y'all hear everything all right? Well, we're going to worship if y'all want to stand and join us. That's, uh, that's just a fun song to sing right there, isn't it? I like that. Well, I, I was told by several people by email and text that uh, today um, a lot of people will be on vacation. Okay. Yes. 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 yes, thank you. Um, and we're going to do something a little bit different today. Um, I'm going to let you preach the sermon. Okay? Now, a, a lot of you normally preach the sermon anyway because I, I watch you while I'm talking. You're out there talking back and forth. And uh, uh, last week, uh, someone on, on our Facebook said, uh, what's the name of those two ladies that sit over there? And uh, I said, I don't know who in the world you could possibly be talking about. <clears throat> um, but maybe they know who they're talking about. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. And... Um, this week, though, um, I, I got to uh, attend a, an ama amazing prayer meeting Friday night. You ever been in a, in a prayer meeting where it turns into just a time when you're just together with a group of people that love the Lord and they just want to just talk about Him and in their prayer? And we, we prayed for, uh, we were going to, it was just a little benediction prayer. And it ended up being 45 minutes later. Uh, and uh, God just, he just came in the room with us and, and was just there. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're singing about, about Jesus. The first song is, there's no one like you. None. No one. As we continue reading through the book of Mark, we come to Mark chapter 7. I'm going to read with, uh, in verse uh, 31. Uh, Mark chapter 7, verse 31. In case you're wondering, I'm reading from the uh, Christian Standard Bible. I, I really want you, though, to, to pull up different versions of the Bible because you're going to see in, in verse 37 uh, an incredible thing happens and if you, if you have a different version, like the NIV, the New American Standard, the King James, uh, any of these other versions, you're going to see something really incredible happen there in verse 37. So um, follow along with me as we begin reading in verse 31 of Mark 7. Again, leaving the region of Tyre, he, that's Jesus, went by way of Saddam to the Sea of Galilee through the region of the Decapolis. So, so he's basically, he's... He, he's left the country uh, of Israel, and now he's coming back to Israel, and he, he's walking down the eastern side of the Sea of Galilee. Okay, Today, we, we would call that side the, uh, the Jordan. Uh, th this is where uh, the Canaanites live and, and, and uh, Palestinians. So they brought him, they brought to him a deaf man who had difficulty speaking and begged Jesus to lay his hand on him. So he took him away from the crowd in private. After putting his fingers on the man's ears and spitting, he touched his tongue. Looking up to heaven, he sighed deeply and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be open. Immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak clearly. <coughs> He ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more they proclaimed it. They were extremely astonished. That, there it is. What does your version say? Mine says they were extremely astonished and said, he has done everything well. He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf hear and the, the mute to speak. So I, I want us to focus on he has done everything well. And they were extremely astonished. They were amazed beyond belief. They were excited 
so much that they couldn't explain it. What happens here in this, this verse is that the writer, Mark, he's trying to describe how these people feel and he, he gets to the point where he's, he's like, and they were, what were they? And he looked all through the Greek language and he realized there was really no word that described how these people felt at this moment in their life. So he made up a word, literally made up a word. And the word is translated extremely astonished, overjoyed, ab above and beyond, um, uh, uh, excited. It, the, the word is translated so many different ways and that's why I wanted you to look in your Bible and see how, how it's translated because Mark says, I just want you to understand that when they saw Jesus, when they understood what he had done, they, they couldn't, words couldn't express how they felt. Jesus had healed many people, a lot of people. Beginning in Mark chapter 1, uh, he had helped people, he healed people. And he had always done it differently. Look at this. This one he did in private instead of public. This one he, he spat and then pokes the guy in the ears. And then he speaks Hebrew. And then he asks God to heal him. Well, no healings, no two healings are the same. Listen to that. They're not the same. They're different. All the way through scripture, every time God does something in somebody's life, it's different. It's individual for that person. And so, I want to ask you this. Can you think of a time in your life when it was indescribable? Indescribable what God was doing. Something that happened to you that that you, you at the moment you you just couldn't explain it. Something that happened to you that that absolutely just just blew your mind. That that God was actually actually doing this in in your presence. Well, I want to start. Then I'm going to ask others in the congregation if y'all will share. Um. And when I'm trying to decide which one, I, I had a whole sermon, and, and, and during the sermon, I had different things picked out that I was going to share about times that, that I have seen God do some things that have just been absolutely beyond belief, and, and I, I, I just could not, can't explain it. So I'm trying to just pick one of those today, and and so I'm, I'm simply just going to go to, to this past week and, and share something that, that God did this just this past week in, in, in our lives that I just sit back in, in, in amazement and in bewilderment uh, and think that, wow, uh, God, is, God is an amazing uh, and a, a, a powerful God and, and he gets to, we, we get to see him work in our life in, in such, such strange ways. Uh, sometimes, and um, right now I'm actually thinking of two others in two other times this past week. Um, well, let me just let me just pick one, okay? Um, just simply to to, to share uh, with you how how God is working. Um, th there's a, a a pastor friend that we have been supporting financially. Uh, now for quite some time, Shinov and I, and um, Lord laid on my heart to uh, send him three hundred dollars, and he called. I didn't tell him how much we had sent him. I just I told him I said, "Hey, look, we're going to send you some money." And, I, and so he called, and he said, "He said, uh, he said, Dad, I, I need to tell you, I'm holding in my hands more money than I've ever had in my entire life." And I, I don't know what to do with it. You have blessed me beyond measure. Now this was $300. How many of you would say $300 was a life-changing amount of money? 
Now, maybe if you're a teenager or a young 20-year-old, but I don't think $300 would change our lives, would it? Be honest. I mean, that's how much we spend eating out a month, typically. He took the $300 and he bought a business. He bought a business. And with that money, he's now going to be able to support about eight other families and save that money each day and within a couple of months be able to buy another business. And I have got to see this past week how God has taken just me listening and saying, okay, here's, here's $300, um, which, is, which is half what we make. Here's $300, and I'm going to share it with somebody. And that $300 to them literally changed their life and about eight other families. And within two months, another eight families. And this thing could, could absolutely just continue to to expand and I was I was telling Shinova about it um, I was telling Shinova about it um, she was in the dark uh, because I, I didn't tell her that we sent uh, the pastor the money um, she has handed all the money over to me to take care of um, six years ago and um, so I told her about it Thursday and told her about all the things that had happened uh, within just the three days of, uh, of that pastor receiving that money. And, and we just we just praise God together that we could, we could take that amount and God could use that. Just spoke to our heart. Nobody asked for anything. You understand this was not him over there asking or anything. It was just God speaking to us. And it literally, I can't describe it. And the, the, the reason I'm thinking is because he said, he said, Dad, I can't tell you what difference this is going to make in my life. That's the word that Mark used. I can't tell you how excited these people were when they saw Jesus healing them. So, that deal, um, I want to ask you to come and get this microphone up here. And Neil has some baby wipes, Clorox wipes, actually. They're not, don't wipe your baby with these things. That's wrong. That would be a, a bad baby. Um... But I've asked Neil if he would uh, give you an opportunity to share about what your Jesus has done that is beyond belief. We're going to have a few share now. We're going to sing again, have some more share, sing again, have some more share, and then we're going to close the service in a song. And uh, so... You know what's coming next after after we share. We're going to sing, and then after that, we're going to have some time of sharing. So uh, I won't be back up here. This is it. Um, so you've got the service. Who's first? Any volunteers? Just a quick testimony. Are you volunteering, Will, or is this for you? <laughs> well, it's been, gosh, I don't know, 15 years ago. Uh, well, maybe you don't have to hold that up in your mouth. I was about 15 years ago when I was, uh, I mean, I couldn't even drive down the road without throwing up. And, I mean, I would eat a piece of bread. I'd get sick and throw up. I don't know what was wrong with me. And I'm poor. I didn't have insurance or anything like that. So um, it went on for a while, and I tried different home remedies. Nothing worked. And I was going to the Christ Community Church up here in Rome, and they don't do the go up front and ask to have your hands, you know, hands laid on you. So I did that. <laughs> I pray well, Will's mother first told me the verse in the Bible to use, and I did that. And then I went to the preacher. And he was kind of hesitant, but he said, okay. And so he called the elders of the church up, and they laid hands on me. And others came up in the church, he said, if there's anyone. And I was healed. I mean, I, I was just totally healed. Okay, so me and Will was going down the road after that. And I was 
feeling really good, I pulled over there at the Bill Max parking lot, and this is really gross, and I threw up like a gallon of something black. I think it was cancer. And I haven't had any problems like that since. Amen. Anybody else want to share? Some of you may know and others may not, but seven years ago, in May, um, my husband was pinned under a farm tractor. Um, we're talking a 6,000 pound tractor across his pelvis. Uh, the tractor flipped him. He landed on his back and had sense enough to roll over on his belly. Otherwise, I don't think I would have him today. Um, he called me from under the tractor, had his cell phone in his pocket, pulled it out and said, I'm under the tractor up on the hill. Get help. I know 911 won't get here quick enough. So I did. I grabbed two neighbors on my way back from work, went up on the hill. I can't lift a 6,000 pound tractor. There's no way. Um, I never felt so helpless in my life as what I did in that moment. All I could do was stroke his head and pray. And a calm came over me that I've never had before, and I know it had to be God. And he looked at me, Tom looked at me and he said, I've already made my peace with the Lord and I've asked him to take care of you. And I looked at him, I said, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm not done with you yet, and I'm sure he isn't either. And he wasn't. Um, it was, uh, helicopter ride from Wayne to Huntington and then from Huntington to Morgantown where he spent 11 days in ICU. They put a titanium plate in his pelvis and they call them screws, I call them bolts because they're about yay long. Go through his hip bones into his plate, which is how he can walk. They didn't expect him to make it. Nobody did. He was the third tractor accident that weekend in Morgantown and he's the only one that left the hospital alive. Came back to Huntington and spent 23 days in Health South and the therapists were amazed because he did what they asked him to do. He was determined to heal. I mean, they don't get that very often. <laughs> there were several exercises he couldn't do because his upper body had so much damage. His lung was collapsed. He had multiple spinal fractures. His lung collapsed. I mean, he was a mess. Um, so most of his exercise was lower body. And these ladies would come in probably in their 80s that had had knee surgery or hip surgery and they would moan and complain about they couldn't do the exercise. Well, Tom became the therapy room cheerleader and he encouraged them, come on ladies, if I can do it, so can you. Let's get over there and get this done. Well, when he came home, he was scheduled for four months of therapy. He graduated in two because there was nothing else I could teach him. He has pain every day and he will have pain every day. But I thank God that he left him here with me. Um, He's my walking, talking, breathing miracle, and I tell people that all the time. So I know God is real, and I know God has blessed me in a way that I can't put into words other than to say thank you. Anybody else want to share? share a time in my life. Uh, I used to go to Promise Keepers a lot. It was a men's men's ministry that was huge. It filled stadiums when it was at its, at its height. And you'd go there and there'd be priests with their full priest gear. There'd be people dancing in the aisles, us Baptists sitting there kind of calmly. And there'd be <laughs> groups of all kinds of people. It didn't matter. It was just a wonderful thing. It was so powerful. And one year in 1997, they decided to have a... Uh, one conference instead of all these little ones. And so they descended on Washington, D.C. And over a million men went there. At the time, I was in graduate school. I was newly married. I couldn't go. I had no money. And I thought, what a wonderful chance to worship God, to be with this, to be part of this. How exciting. And then a friend of mine, he, uh, I was living in North Dakota, and he checked around, and he's one of these guys that uh, he could knock on a thousand doors, get a thousand no's, and keep going. So he he checked around, he found a bus ministry out of Texas. And they were willing to come up from Texas to North Dakota, pick us up, and then take us to Washington, D.C. for this event. $75 round trip. 
and there were eight denominations on the bus, all different types, and we were able to go. Got to D.C., and there was a big, uh, one of the charismatic denominations, just a gigantic church, opened their doors, gave us free pizza, let us stay there for free, and we had uh, two or three days of just intense, powerful worship. A million men got on their faces in repentance for being bad fathers, for being bad husbands, for being bad Christians, just everything you can imagine was so powerful. There was Native American groups, there was all different races, there was all different everything, just constant, nonstop. It was such a powerful experience, and I shouldn't have been able to go. But it was just an amazing time, and God just kind of opened the doors. It's pretty amazing. Anybody else? was a this last trip to Africa we, uh, we went to several churches but um, the moment that uh, we walked in the church and the, the worship service started and kids came from from all over the neighborhood and took over took the, they, they, they threw a, a party right in the middle of the worship there, and I, I'm, I'm talking like anywhere from age, I'm going to say two-ish to twelve-ish. The reason that means so much to me is because my first trip to Africa, kids weren't allowed in the church. There, there was a, a misconception that, that they had about them. The, the types of kids and, and um, whether or not they should hear the gospel yet. Uh, mortality rate was so quick and they were they were worried that if they told them the gospel and the kids rejected it, then they would go to hell. But if they, if they never knew, then maybe they would never reach that age of accountability. But that first trip, Dad's going to say it was me, that I, it's my story, so I'm going to tell it. I, I was going to sit there and just be pained the entire time. But Dad saw me sitting at the edge of my seat and, and kind of just, <laughs> you want to go, don't you? Yeah, sick him. <laughs> and so I, I, I took off, and while I was out there with the kids, Dad and, and Ed and Jason all stayed with the church pastors and talked with them and walked them through how Jesus said, let the little children come to me. And they, they worked through them and with them theologically. And seeing that all just come together for, that, for our last trip there, it was amazing and incredible to know that those kids have hope. Makes me just makes me want to thank God for letting me be a small part of that. Hey, you can all you all can have a seat. My turn, I guess. Um, something spectacular.
released four, five major deaths in my family, and two of them were my grandparents, which I had, which died of dementia. I had, I, me and my mom pretty much took care of them and lived with them. And a lot of things have happened since then. That was like five, six years ago, maybe. And a lot of things have happened since then. But through all that sadness, through all that grief, I saw that steadfast love come up again and again. Not only through not only through my friends and family, but just everywhere. And I know this this year's gone crazy. I mean, everything's just turned upside down. But if I could say one thing, it's just to look for the good things. Look for the moments where God is, and even if you, even if it's hard to see, look, He's there. You just have to look. Hey, that's that's the main. That's the one thing I see faithfulness. All right, your turn. see it in other people. Um, there has been a lot of sadness, but there's also been a lot of laughter. There's been a lot of love. There has been times when people have reached into our lives, and that's, those are God things. And there have been a million times when you have reached into other people's lives that you don't see. God is weaving a story through each and every one of our lives. And don't think just because you don't have some amazing story to tell that he's not doing something amazing. Anybody else want to share? God's laying something on your heart if you want to share it.
told her, I said, Chrissy, go see Summer. She's waiting on you. And I turned around and walked out of the room, and Gary was sitting with her. And it just took a, maybe a minute, and he'd come out, and he said, well, she's gone. He said, let me tell you what she done. He said, she looked at me with the biggest smile her face ever was, as if she knew who she was seeing and where she was at. And the only thing that made me feel good, I had two daughters was together that Summer wasn't by herself anymore. Anybody else want to share? stand back up with us I have no idea where I was at I hate transitioning halfway through a script uh, <laughs> I'll just start over thank you <laughs> thank you for sharing thank you for your stories thank you for letting us be a part of that I, I was blessed by everything that everyone said thank you so much for being a part of this church Thank you for letting us be a part of your life. Thank you for connecting people to God, to others, and to their purpose. And I hope as you go today, you remember what we're all about. I hope you remember what he's all about. Pray with me, church. Thank you, God, so much that sometimes you just, <laughs> you amaze us in ways we just can't describe. Thank you for the miracles you do in our life, and thank you for the daily miracles you give us. Thank you for your constant love. Thank you for all that you do. We love you, God, and we praise you. Amen. Okay, just a few announcements this morning. First of all, if there's any newcomers, just want to welcome you. You should have gotten a connection card if you want to fill it out and bring it to the back after church. We have a t-shirt we'd like to give you and like to get to know you a little bit so we can minister to you and your families. Okay, there's a special announcement. Everyone in the church is invited to the wedding of Abigail Rose Mainshine and Jonathan Riley this Friday, July 18th. No. My email from Ricky says Friday, <laughs> just so we're clear on that. Okay. The wedding of Abigail Rose Vanshine and Jonathan Riley will be this Saturday, July 19th. 6 p.m. It is the 18th. It's Saturday, July 18th. Saturday. It's Saturday. Okay, my job is correcting. Uh, Saturday, July 18th at 6 p.m. at the crossing here. Seating will begin at 5.30, there will be reception following the service at church. This is Sean and Carrie Mainshine's oldest daughter, Abby. And she's the one with a little boy named Mason. And right now they're at the campground ministry during the summer. Also, we'll continue the Revelation study Monday at 6 o'clock. We got through about half of chapter 1. <laughs> we'll see how we can do. But it's very laid back. It's a good opportunity to come. Everyone's welcome. And just a reminder, when we give testimonies, it's, it's not a, a one-up kind of a thing. God works in so many different ways. Now, I haven't been to Africa. I haven't done some incredible things that you've done that God's worked in your lives. But he's done things in my life that's different that I can share as well. So everybody has a testimony. Even if you don't think it, you do. You affect people. So God works through all of us. So don't forget that there is something everybody can share. So let's pray as we finish out. Father, this is all about you. This is thinking about you and how great you are, Lord. In your infinite multitude, just unfathomable greatness, you reach out into each of our lives. You care enough to draw us to yourself, to convict us, to draw us, sometimes to punish us, but it's all for our good and for your glory. Lord, we are so humbled by your love. And we admit, Lord, and we know that it's only you and only through you and your greatness that we're here at all. 
Thank you for that love, Lord. And we just pray that you continue to draw us to yourself, Lord. Give us courage to share our own testimony because you've worked in our lives different than anybody else. And that's a powerful testimony. And that's what you use to reach people. So thank you, Father. We give you all the praise and the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.